According to the 2010 census, Latinos now top 50 million or more. Then six, making up 16% of the nation, making them the fastest growing population in the country. The Latino population has grown 43% since the year 2000. All of that underscoring the importance for candidates to spend time and money on issues that resonate with Latino communities. Tomas Reyes is the chairman of the Connecticut Hispanic Democratic Caucus. Tomas, thanks for being here. Thank you. Let's just start off with um, making the case for why candidates like Mr. Hill should be paying attention to Latinos. Well, Mr. Hill is running in Connecticut, and in Connecticut we make up 13.5% uh, of the total community. That's half a million people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been uh, attempting to put together voter registration drives, and we've been somewhat successful, not as successful as I would like us to be. But uh, in tight races, we make up the difference. And uh, has that happened? I know in the 2008 uh, presidential election, certainly Latinos uh, held a very strong force. That's right. That's right. And we, we, we tend to vote um, in a block um, based on how the candidates react to issues that are critical to our community. Let's start here in, in Connecticut. Tell me how um, your members are viewing both the race uh, for Senator Lieberman's seat and Congressman Murphy's. What, how are they viewing the candidates and, and the debate so far? Well, we are a, we're, we're a partisan organization, mm -hmm. so I would be remiss to say that, <laughs> that we're, we're, we're being um, uh, completely neutral. But we're interviewing and we're talking to the Democratic candidates that are running in the U.S. Senate race. There's a, a four-way um, race for uh, nomination. Uh, Representative Tong recently um, exited the race. Uh, and, and we want to talk to those candidates and see where they stand on issues that are critical to us. Education, um, um, immigration reform, the DREAM Act. Uh, very specific positions on on profiling, uh, things that are that, that that we deal with every day. Yeah, Connecticut has recently um, <clears throat> made some advances in, in some of those issues. What are the things? I mean, are they are they addressing those issues? Do you think in the debates, or are they giving out enough information about where they stand on those things for you? Well, not really. Which is why we we want to talk more to them. Uh -huh. We we uh, have not made a decision in the caucus. Uh, to endorse anyone yet, mm -hmm. and we want to have them address uh, not only to us but to the general public what their positions are on things like immigration reform. Yeah, let's talk about immigration. What what would you like their position to be? Well, we would like for them to um, talk about a pathway to citizenship mm -hmm. for for people who have been in this country for a long time, mm -hmm. for people who are participating in our economy, for people who work every day. And I personally do not believe the uh, the rhetoric that says that they're 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 sucking all the money out of our government. Mm -hmm. uh, immigrants do not do that, mm -hmm. and and we found a way to welcome other ethnic groups. We need to find a way to uh, welcome uh, the Latino immigrants. Obviously, um, as you mentioned, one of the biggest issues is education. Currently, at the capital, the state capital, education reform is the hottest topic. What sorts of um, proposals would you like to see get done by the end of the legislative session to make sure that there is substantial education reform in Connecticut? Well, I personally don't think we talk enough about education reform. The fact is that 50% of Latino high school students don't graduate. In our opinion, that's a crime. Why is that? I, I don't know any one particular issue, but I think the fact that employment opportunities, housing opportunities, are 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 not as uh, accessible to our community as they are to other communities are a big cause of that. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, also a lot has been made of Mitt Romney um, needing to court the Latino vote, uh, also of President Obama needing to win the Latino vote in order to win the election. What, what, what sorts of things do you watch for at this point in that race um, coming from the candidates? Well, again, you know, we're a partisan um, organization, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a lifelong Democrat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that uh, President Obama has done a great job of beginning to redefine what government is about and what government should mean to the citizens. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, um, I think his message resonated in 2008. I think it's going to resonate maybe even more now. 
and therefore the Republican side of the aisle understands that we have a large number of people. Mm -hmm. and, and they're hopefully going to try to convince us that their um, take on government, their definition of government would fit what our needs are better. One of the criticisms or observations from the pundits is that um, while people, while Latinos supported uh, President Obama in 2008, that uh, perhaps he has not done enough since then to keep their vote in 2012. Well, I've heard that criticism and, and especially in immigration reform, there is that criticism is getting louder and louder, and I'm hope I hope that he hears it, right. and his administration hears it. All right. Well, we'll be watching uh, more from you over the next year as the elections really heat up. Tomas Reyes, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, a show of force in the debate over education reform. Connecticut's Black and Latino Caucus takes a stand.